Hey, what's happening guys? It's Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. Right on this little video, we're going to be starting off a little breeding colony of dwarf rainbow fish. Now, there is a stunning little iridescent fish and they come from these jungle streams, lush little jungle streams in Western New Guinea. And um, they're absolutely stunning. Like I say, when you get them under the right light conditions, their fins really do pop and those scales really do shine up those ir iridescent rainbow colours. You can tell the males, because the males have got the red edges of the fins and that more of a V-shaped body, and the females are more slender, and they've got that yellow tail and that yellow leading edge to the fins. Okay, so that's quite simple to tell them and sex them apart. Now I've got in here, I've got four males and five females, okay? Now I've put them in there, I've, when I got them out in the, sh went up to the shop to pick these guys up, um, we made a little bit of a mistake and we've got too many males so I'll probably have to take one male out and I'll probably do three to five three males to five females and that'll, talk, that'll normally give us a, little, a good little start to a breeding group now you can see I've put them in to this tank here we've got a cycled sponge filter we've got that temperature set at around 26 degrees and um, the pH of the water as it stands at the moment is about seven okay now we're going to want to up that these are quite a high ph fish they, they like more of a higher ph from 7.5 to 8 they like around those sort of ranges so that's the sort of range they're going to breed at so we're going to try and keep them around that they're already they're still settling in so they're not going to do a lot of breeding now these are a super spooky little fish and they know i'm here these guys are very very intelligent little guys they really do know what is going on on the outside of the tank where i am they're very vigilant and they've always they're always on guard now obviously they've got nowhere to hide at the moment so what we're going to do is we're going to make up a spawning mop i'm going to teach you guys how to make a spawning mop if you don't know already and um i've got some green i'll try not to make these guys startle them too much but i've got some green wool there just coming into frame okay and this is acrylic wool types we're going to have one which is going to be they don't want to float in some some rainbow fish like floating spawning mops these guys will either have a nice clump of java moss on the on the on the bottom okay and then they'll go in amongst it the males will lure the females over it and they'll deposit the eggs over a few days okay so um we'll get into that when we do that part of the video okay so what i'm going to do now is reset you up and we'll make this spawning mop okay right guys there's a nicer view little jackson there playing around in his paludarium all looking nice. All those herbs are growing really nicely as too. The basil's growing well. That thyme's starting to move as well. And uh, everything's starting to uh, grow in now and starting to look a lot more healthier. Like I say, when you plant these things, they get a bit, a bit limp around the edges, but they soon straighten up again when they start absorbing that water and get, get settled in. Right then, we've got our nice big ball of green acrylic wool. And now what we've got to do, it's a super simple thing to do, is you're just going to need, I've just got a cork a little cork board there and basically what you do is just hold your thumb on the end and you just keep wrapping it around probably best to put the the wool in a bowl or something on the floor so it can spin around I've got a bowl here which I'll just clean out a minute that's the bowl that I'm going to use. Just going to plonk it down on my workbench, on my saw, sorry, down on here, and then put that back in there. Now, like I said, you just literally just keep wrapping it around. Don't have to go, don't go tight, but just keep wrapping it around and around. And it's completely up to you how big or how small that you want these to be. I like to make them for rainbow fish quite chunky, as you will see. I'm just going to stop you a minute and I'm going to put a load of wraps around there like that and then I'll show you where we go from there, okay? Right, there you go. I've wrapped it around there quite a few times as you can see. So we're going to, obviously the front and the back, it's all going to clump together. Now all you do now, I haven't tied any knots but you just, you can measure that so it goes down to one of the ends. Just relax it off a bit. Then you get the same length, okay? Now what you want to do is get your 
thread that you have which you've just cut I've got some long tweezers there and just put them behind grab that pull that through there like that and then slide that all the way I'm just going to lower that down a minute pull that all the way to the top like that so you've gone through and then you just tie a knot normal overhand knot like the old granny knot would be pinch that together you don't want it too too tight at this point you just want something to hold it and then what you do is you just slide that off This is the bit where you don't want to have done it too tight, otherwise you'll have a right time trying to get that off of there, okay? Right, now you've just got a big lump of wool, strands. Now, what I tend to do, that's why I don't tie it too tight at the start. I'm trying to get a bit more light in this for you. But I like to tie it just like that. What I tend to do now is just hold it there. Now I've got some, I've got a nice little ball of media there, center glass media, and I just place that underneath, and then I wrap that end around it and hold it then with with my hand like so. Squeeze it in as much as you can, and then you take that loose tail. And you. If you bring your hand in upside down, turn it over like that, place that on the top, and that'll give you like one half hitch, okay? And then you can pull that up tight, hold that with your finger, go in again, twist that over the top again, and just repeat this a few times, and that'll hold it nice and steady steady and that little ball of media will stay in there now this is going to help it to soak some things some nylons will sink some float some acrylics float when they're boiled we've got to boil these yet so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to snip that off that main roll and we've still got that little tie left on the end and then what we've got to do is we've got to go in at the base between all these little loops grab all those and then we've got to run the scissors then hold your finger through it like so and then grab my other pair of scissors which is over here somewhere straight through there pull it up tight and then just start snipping away this doesn't have to be perfect guys and you'll probably miss a few loops but you'll find them and you just snip them off and then you can just give it a good shake and there you have a very nice big spawning mop you see look at that now they're going to swim in amongst that now what I tend to do is leave that long tail on as well because if you want to hang them you can hang it in the tank off the lid like this and it'll just hang in the water like a big squid and they'll go in and they'll rattle in amongst it different types of rainbow fish and egg scatterers and lay their eggs in amongst it okay or if you want it to sink that'll sink and it'll sink to the bottom that'll either float up or clump up on the bottom and act like a big bunch of java moss 
on the on the bottom but now what we've got to do guys is we've got to boil it okay now when you boil these things do it a couple of times now the reason why you do it is because sometimes they spray things on this obviously things to um to stop the fabrics from rotting and different things like that and you may get a bit of dye come out as well in the in in the pan when you boil it um i'll show you that in a sec but that's that's the game plan that's what we're going to do now we're going to go in the kitchen we're going to boil him up do it a couple of times clear that old dye out and then we'll add it to the tank with these little rainbow fish and give them some cover and then we'll have another little chat about those okay right guys he's in the saucepan in the kitchen and um, well i'm just boiling a kettle now and then i'm going to pour it in and then we'll bubble it away for about 15 minutes 15 20 minutes on a low simmer just to release any of that old dye and kill any old rubbish or anything that's on there okay right boiling hot water now just cover him over nicely sometimes you don't get any dye sometimes you can get quite a lot of dye so it's best to uh, to do this little procedure first already you can see that water starting to go green and that's what we want to remove we want to remove all that horrible old excess dye and we're just going to let that roll around in there now for about 20 minutes empty that okay then run it under some cold water put it back in the pan and give it a second boil that's what i do okay right okay guys i have now boiled it twice and we've dried it out now when you boil it, it has a slight little effect and it makes it all go a little bit a little bit frayed and it it tends to uh, it just seems to hang nicer and it just sort of separates it a little bit which is nice the little guys are in there saying i can't wait for this to touch down so we can hide in amongst it and feel a bit safer so let's put it in the tank okay guys it's in the tank they're saying I don't know what that is, so they're being a little bit wary of it for a minute. But once they settle in, they'll be flying in amongst that in no time at all. Now, it's quite a big mop, as you can see, there's a little bit of air being released from it. Try and, if you set all this up before, you can give it a little bit of a squeeze out, but the air will slowly purge out of it in no time at all. And as you can see, it's a lovely big spawning mop there that they can use to go in there and lay those lovely little eggs all over the place. And with a little shoal like we've got in there, we can get up to maybe 100, maybe over 150 eggs a week, um, if all goes well. Now's the best time to feed them up with live food. All the bloodworm, mosquito larvae, daphnia, glassworms, um, all kind of stuff. Tube effects, anything that you want. Small worms, micro worms, anything in the water, these guys will pick it up. But one thing I will say, guys, to, is... When, with rainbow fish, especially these dwarf rainbow fish, they won't really eat off the bottom, okay? They tend to be mid-water to surface feeders, where the, in the wild they'll be taking flies and different midges and things, mosquitoes off the surface. So be careful when you're breeding them to put in live food only, okay? Because otherwise food's going to settle on the bottom, it's going to get wafted underneath the spawning mops. You don't want to be going in there messing around with things, upsetting them again. So that's the best plan of action I can give you at the moment for this little part one of how to breed these little guys and a great thing about these little rainbow fish is is they only get to around two inches long they're a very very small rainbow fish species but they have got big personalities and absolutely amazing and stunning coloration in them when they come up into the light they really do pop now they're going to be a little bit tetchy for for a couple of days properly probably sorry and and then they'll be starting to take the worm and the different things that I'm going to put in there, the, the blood worms. And they'll soon get used to that spawning mop. And they'll call it home. So we'll use that as part two, where hopefully we'll come back and we'll be feeding them up for the next couple of days with some nice live food. And then we'll go we'll go back and hopefully I can show you some nice spawning activity. And, um, and we can carry on the breeding, okay? All right, guys, just a few little bullet points here for your tank setup, what you're going to need is a, probably a 24 inch by 12 by 12 that's 60 by 30 by 30 centimetres okay for your breeding setup you're going to want a cycled sponge filter in there make sure it's cycled and everything's up and running before you put the guys in obviously and the tank's been running for 
a couple of weeks with just the water in. You want your pH to be around 7.5, okay, to 7.6, as high as 8 you can go. They're quite hardy little fish, like I said, and they, they like a higher, a higher pH. Okay, you want a temperature of around 24 to 26 centigrade, that's 75 to 79 Fahrenheit, and you want that nice big spawning mop or a big clump of Java moss in the corner, like you can see there on the left hand side, the one we've just made. So here we go, that's part one, okay, that's now all, all the little bullet points that you're going to need now, and for the rest of it now, all we're going to do is let these fish settle in, okay, they've got to be nice and chilled. As you can see, they're a little bit stressed. They're hiding under the filter at the moment because I've been in there with that. And like I said, they are very, very spooky little fish, rainbows. And um, But once they settle in, they're going to be absolutely fine. Now, if you wanted to, you could put a plant in there as well, a nice broadleaf plant. It wouldn't hurt. It'd give them a little bit more security. Black the sides of the tank off as well and the back, as you can see that I've done with this tank here. So that will give them three sides of privacy and just that viewing panel for you to keep your eye on them in the front stay out of there as much as you can now only feed like I said live food and then just do partial water changes once a week 20% very very carefully you can do it with an airline out the side of the tank but we'll get into that on the next on the next episode okay anyway guys I hope you like that little first episode on how to breed dwarf rainbow fish Next time we'll be hopefully showing you a spawn and the fry and then we'll get into raising them up and going on from there. If you're new to the channel pop back and have a look at some of my other videos. I've got lots of different breeding videos on there from pygmy corries, neon tetras, cardinal tetras, all different types of species I've been breeding and trying to get a big catalogue for you guys so you can go back through all my playlists. And if you fancy breeding something and giving it a go, hopefully you'll find it in there. And um, and it'll help you out, okay? Anyway, guys, as always, your stars love you loads. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the channel. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell for up-and-coming videos. And you won't miss anything that way. And as always, take care of yourselves. Bye for now. See you in the next one. Just me and my